Unless you have a whinging, there is no Halloween in Australia. I just said to you, shut the fuck up. Hey kids, quick video today because I'm about to film another episode of The Wild Vet Halloween Edition. I'm doing a bit of a quick look for it and I thought it could be a nice little fun video for people who want to try something for Halloween but don't want to do anything too advanced. This is going to be super quick, super easy, so let's jump into it. Get your skin prepped, primer, whatever you do to get ready. With your base, I'm aiming for a lighter base just because I want the colours that I add on top to pop. So here we go. Then going in with an even lighter shade, really highlight the central part of your face. We want to give a bit of a rounded look. I forgot to mention for this look, because my kid is called Jack, we're going as jack-o'-lanterns. That's why we're going to create an overall round face. Round-ish. No chisel or cheekbones here, although we'll do a bit of contouring later. If you're having trouble blending two colours together, you can whack in a midpoint. I'm going in with a midpoint, not because of blending, but I actually want to bring in a bit of a sallow look, so it's a bit of a corpsey shade on my skin. Try and be at least a little neat, but don't stress yourself, because this is costume, it's Halloween, it's rough, it's gritty. You can get away with going in a little bit raw. We all know how much we love a bit of raw action. If you have facial hair, I always advise not to blend all the way through it. It just always looks terrible. But if you skim through the top, you can just work your brush back and forth. And then if it's still sticking too much, just get a wet wipe or something damp and wipe over the top. That's the way to blend it seamlessly into your facial hair. Oh, my hair bitches, bitches out there. Out there. Mm. Ideally, I'd set with a pale white powder or a super white for those in the know. But I'm actually all out. So I'm just gonna use a translucent powder. And it's Halloween. Don't be using your hourglass, people. Go in with a cheapie. Grab your Morphe's. Grab your good quality basics. They'll do the right thing for you all night. And they won't cost you fortune. Always remember, press out any creases before you set your face. Otherwise, you'll be setting creases into your face. And no one wants to add extra lines. No, no, no. The only lines on party night should be on toilet seats and mirrors. Am I right, ladies? Find yourself a good powder. Some of these products I'm using are drugstore. And again, this isn't about brands. It's more about whatever you have on hand, use what you've got and what works for you. But I find this particular concealer, I won't say its name, it just rhymes with Revolution, Revolution Beauty, Beauty from Priceline. It tends to give me a bit of texture, so I'm really glad that the Morphe powder is really going to smooth over that face because I don't want to look like a nutsack. This is my little trick to have your makeup last all night, look flawless all night. Now, I'm a sweater, I'm an Arab. What we like to do for fun is perspire to rehydrate the world. I could literally solve droughts with what comes out of my face. Get an all nighter matte finish setting spray. I'm talking industrial grade. Set that face before you go with anything else. After you spray your face, fan it to set it immediately to seize the product in place. If you put on too much and you let it run, it's gonna drag that product down. You really wanna shock it into place. It's shocking, people, shocking. Ooh. Because we're coming as a pumpkin, we're gonna be working with oranges. I'm gonna choose two tones, primarily these. This does look red, but it is quite orange on the skin. Putting in your medium shade first, really buff out those edges and then deepen it with the darkest shade is gonna really give you a beautiful ombre. Because this is costume, again, don't even worry about it being absolutely perfect. It's Halloween. So just jump in and here we go. This product, I mean, using is the Trixie Cosmetics Mod About You palette for those of you who are heterosexual or just are uninformed. Now, normally I would go down the neck. The reason why I'm not today is because I will be with animals and they will be on my neck. I'll just go in later and just add a bit of a base, just a plain base to match my magicology, my, my titties. This is a pumpkin. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. You can get away with it being a little bit blotchy, but we want to make sure that we ombre into the front of our face. No solid stop. I mean, on camera, it looks a little solid, but in person, it seamlessly blends. Coming in with a smaller brush and a deeper color, really carve out those pockets of your cheeks, the edges of your face, really create that rounded image. This is an optical illusion. You want to create roundness to the face. A setting spray at the end will also help buff out any of those harsh edges. Going back into the lighter color because I want to bring the roundness further down and with a little bit of excess of that darker color, really create a beautiful middle point and really get that nice shape going on that you can see. And because I forgot, because I'm a moron, we are going to do the same down the nose. Typically, I'd probably go for more of a bulbous look, but this is like a, a half ass look, let's be honest, for you people who are like, I want to be a fat thing. I like to go whole hog for my costumes typically, but because I'll be in a veterinary clinic. This is more of your lazy girl. I'm a hot. I'm the gang Yes. Duh. I'm a mouth. Really concentrating that deeper color right around your eyes. We want to create a little bit of depth when we add those deep carved out pumpkin sockets later. I promise it won't look as insane when we're done. This is the structure for our face. It's not going to be what people see at first. It will be when you're putting it on. You'll be like, wow, that's way too much. But when it all comes together, you'll be like, oh, okay. 
don't really see that. You see the darker elements and the bolder elements. Now taking, if you have it, uh, face paint, I'm gonna use an eye primer in orange and black. It's really like a base. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect. It's gonna give longevity and vibrancy to your colors, but also make you work a lot easier when it comes to blending the powders on top, really. A lot of us are rushing to these parties, so we don't have all day to blend everything out. Three shades. Start from lightest, going to darkest. I'm going to keep the shape quite circular because I am a pumpkin. Don't be afraid to get a little big with this. Remember, like, this is a costume, it's Halloween, or a pumpkin. Or we have a candle up African butt to make our eyes glow and sparkle. Don't be afraid to blend that up to the brow bone. Once we start adding highlighter and other colors, it's not going to read as bright orange. This is all foundation. It's not gonna be what you look like at the end. Kind of got to get scary before you get glam. If you find you've gone too high or your blending's going too high because you've applied too much product, just go with a clean finger and really diffuse those edges. If you're not only just gorgeous and talented and a genius like me, now is the time you'll get out your eye goop. With blacks, unless you apply them quite heavily, they're going to blend out to be a gray. Don't worry about it, we'll deepen it with black powder later. This is where you have to be careful. Once you've added black, usually pretty permanent. Do little bit by little bit, look forward. If you need to, take a step back, really gauge the proportions of your face, and then add more. Clean brush, smoke those colors together. What I like to do is I like to let the color set before I continue. Otherwise, it's really gonna just grip your color and it's gonna be really hard to blend out. I've just got a giant color palette, Beauty Bay, best freaking palette on the market. I'm just gonna go through with that same principle with powders and just reinforce what I did with the primer. The reason why I'm not going in with the same color put around the outside and the structural parts of my face is I want it to be more orange. I want there to be something to differentiate between the pop and the structure. You can also lay quite a thick layer of powder down to avoid fallout. And now for the scary part, we go in with the black. <laughs> Using my new favorite liner. Hey, Gwenny girl. I'm gonna tight line as well to give more depth around the eye. Now, if you're worried about fallout, I'm just gonna tap on the back of my hand because then I can go back and get more powder later off the back of my hand. If you press the first few strokes down, if you're worried about fallout, it's really gonna help adhere that excess product onto the lid, keeping the smoke really to the crease. Then I'll just use whatever's there to really diffuse it outwards. Using what's there, because black is a color that's really just gonna keep going and going. Any color with any discernible depth that's not your skin tone, they're really just going to be a pain if you don't. Use them with a little bit of restraint, a little bit of dominance. Make sure you always move your head around, really check that your blending is where you want it to be from all angles. Even when using a clean brush to blend, make sure you clean it off, otherwise you'll start working product into places you really don't want it. And then we'll be a mess, we're disgusting. Now I'm gonna go through with one of my favorite products, Nikia Joy Cosmetics. She just released them, her chroma shifts. They're a white base, but when you move them, they reflect a color. So I'm gonna go through with, let me just check, Meringue, because it has a golden orange shift, and I'm going to use it to highlight the inner eye, arch the brow, and really give some more dimension to the eye look. Now we're going to go through and highlight the face, but keep this on hold just for a moment. Go with whatever highlighter you like. I'm going to use a really old manky one that's been discontinued because it has a colourful shift, but I'll be right back. Going in with my very, very old Becca Light Chaser. These are some of my favourite highlighters ever invented. I don't know what I'll do when the ones that I have run out. Highlight just the cheekbones down the bridge of the nose. With that chroma shift pigment again. Really just highlighting that apple of the cheek. Highlighter is the gift for those around you. It is not for you to see. Before these pigments have a chance to move, get your setting spray and set everything into place. Now what do we do? We fan, babies, fan. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add just some little designs under the eye. This is a carved pumpkin, doesn't need to be even. Then I'm just gonna go through and I'm just gonna set a little bit of black on it just to deepen it and really set that color. Let's do the bottom lip first. Taking our eyeliner from before, line the bottom lip, and then we're gonna fill it in with an orange lipstick. Blend those colors together. So now top two peaks, and then I'm gonna do a smile and draw some. I'm gonna do the outline with a liner, and then I'm gonna take Trixie's brand new feature lipstick to really fill in the triangles. Don't even worry about symmetry. The glam is just in the eye. As my lips dry, I'm gonna do my lashes and eyebrows. Decided to make the mouth bigger. And I'm just gonna smoke around those edges. And I'll go through with the orange as well, and we'll do it to the eye ones as well. I know that typically you do this in reverse. I wanted to get some of that muddy smoked out color like we did in the eye. The reason why I've left the bottom lip is I want to keep it a little bit humanized. And that's my favorite. I'm actually shooting with orange lighting for the photos. This is actually going to look a lot softer. So now I'll see you in a photograph.